able to welcome back to my channel today I'm here to talk about the books that I read in January and it was a wonderful reading month even though I failed at the most basic of my reading goals which was to read 12 books <laughs> well you know one of my goals for this year is to read about 150 books in 2021 which means I need to average 12 or 13 books each month in January I only finished nine not good not a good start to the year but the quality of books that I read was just fantastic so I'm so pleased so the first book that I finished in 2021 was Barack Obama's memoir, A Promised Land, which I loved, I raved about, I made a full video review here on YouTube. I also produced a series of videos on Instagram where I discussed each part, what each section of the book discusses, and so you could go watch any of those videos and see a little bit more of my thoughts. But in general, I thought this book was superb. I think Barack Obama is... He's just a magnificent writer. He's a wonderful human being, I think. I don't know him personally, of course, and most of what we've heard about him is biased, but I love his writing. I think that he does a really good job of presenting his perspective, um, the unique perspective of being the person at the center of a historical moment, giving his take on how he influenced that history and what it means for us his failures but also his accomplishments and because this book is over seven well it's 701 pages he's pretty wordy he explains that in the beginning that he's going to be long-winded like he usually is but he wanted to acknowledge all the people who have helped him and who have worked with him and so there are a lot of personal stories here where he lauds on his team and I just think it's fantastic. He doesn't repeat a lot of the information that is included in his earlier books. He does pay homage to his mother and his grandmother and his sister and the, the early life of meeting his wife and so on. But most of this book focuses on his political career, his, his work as a U.S. as a U.S. senator, as a state senator, as a U.S. senator, and then as president, focuses on the first three or so years of his presidency, and so there is the anticipation of his next book, which is going to, I think, continue through the second term of his of, in office. And I love this book. I hope that you will also pick it up. Many thanks to Penguin Random House for gifting me this copy and um, Crown Imprint as well. So thank you to the publishers and go pick up a copy of the book as well. Pick it up from your local bookstore, a black owned business if you can and read this book. Just like read it. I read The Silver Sparrow by Terry Joes and I listened to that on audio. This was a uh, wonderful read as well it's about two sisters who don't know they don't really know of each other their father's a bigamist so he has two wives and we're reading from the perspective of one of the daughters who she's the secret life and <laughs> we read her story and then the the book shifts and it's wonderful. I don't want to say too much about it because later this month I'm going to be doing a discussion of Tayari Jones's books. So more on that later. Next two books that I read were for the Run Right Reads Book Club. And I am doing this project this year where I'm reading two books from a different Caribbean country or territory each month. And we started with a French territory in the Caribbean, Guadeloupe. And the two books that we started with were The Bridge of Beyond by Simone Schwartz Barth, translated by Barbara Bray from the French, and The Wondrous and Tragic Life of Ivan and Ivana by Marie Sconde, translated from the French by Richard Philcox. And both of these books were fantastic. I also did a video here where I discussed the books. So go watch that video. I'll link down in below as well as up in the cards. I haven't been doing that. Let's see if we can do that again. So these two books are similar but also very different. This one focuses on a family. We're following the family through the women, the daughters of the family. And so we start the story with a mother, well the grandmother. We start the story with a woman who was a slave and now yeah. she has been emancipated. And we see her living her freedom and teaching her daughters how to exert their freedom, make their own choices, and we see the life that that leads to. So we watch them be very strong women 
in their own right, even though it doesn't really pull them out of poverty. Um, at least they have the freedom to choose that they're not going to do certain jobs. And I love that. I love that depiction. We also have the focus on women, but we have men in the background, men who are supportive, men who ch um, champion their women, and it's wonderful. And then this one focuses on children because we're reading about a pair of twins and how their community and how their family receives them and projects expectations onto them and what's that like growing up um, in the late 1900s, early 2000s in Guadeloupe, the lack of opportunities that still exist for young people and the dreams that they foster and where that takes them in life. This one also focuses on the strong relationship, the strong bond between twins. And there are some themes in here that some people are not going to appreciate, but I loved it. So I really, really love both of these books. You can't hear me talk too much about these books, or at least I feel like I can't talk too much about them. So you'll hear me talk more about them later because, you know, Caribbean books, I'm here for that. Next book that I read was for another project that I'm doing this year, which is to read all the books of Barbara Pym and all the books from Mira Spark. Mira Sparks, um, going through Mira Sparks list is probably going to take me longer than this year, but I'm hoping to finish at least the works of Barbara Pym this year. So this is for a buddy reading group and I should state that my buddy readers are not necessarily interested in reading all the books, but I am. So I'm reading some of the books with them and maybe others by myself. Enough of that. Barbara Pym's writing is in the mid 1900s thereabouts. And a lot of her books focus on a few themes. She writes about science and religion, specifically from the perspective of writing about women who are involved in the church as... <laughs> they're the women who work in the church and sometimes they are fascinated with the clergymen and we see what those relationships are like, but we also see the kind of battles between these women who have competing interests in these priests. So in Something Gazelle, we're reading about um, two sisters who are spinsters. They're in their early 50s, I think. And they both are fascinated with the clergy in different ways. One had a, rel one had a relationship with a priest and he's still in the parish and he's married and so we see his interaction with his wife and how this sister who's the main one of the main characters in the book how she relates to that marriage and the other sister um likes to nurture these young priests who come so the curates and what's that what that is like when they move on to other parts of their life so this is humorous barbara pym is a really comical writer she takes the irony and the comedy from regular life and just kind of impresses upon you just how weird some things are and her characterizations are wonderful she injects science um, she's really big on anthropology and she injects a little bit of science discussion and it's just wonderful I love her books I've come to her writing really late I started reading her works last year end of last year like December and this is my third book that I've read from her so far and I love them all so more on that later because I'm sure that when I have finished reading all her books or at least maybe at a midpoint I'll do a little bit of a summary of what I think of her books so far so that's Barbara Pip. I also finished Beauty Among Ruins by Janelle and I I don't want to mess up her name so I'll just show it to you this I got from the publishers and oh, I should have told you I read a electronic copy of the Barbara Pym book from my library because I don't own any of the books yet so that's coming later as well need to buy all Barbara Pym's books and all the Mirel Sparks books which is 22 more on that later <laughs> I keep saying that right Beauty Among Ruins, I got this arc from the publishers, so thank you to Thomas Nelson Publishers and TLC Book Tours for keeping me stocked with these books. I love it. This is historical romance, and we're reading about an American socialite who 
she doesn't she's done something yeah. to annoy her parents she doesn't want to marry the person that they want them want her to marry and so they ship her off to england in the early 1900s and there is the war starts and so at the time when her exile should have ended she can't come back home so she goes instead to scotland to train as a nurse's aide with her cousin and she's working in uh, Lord's Castle, where um, this Lord has allowed a convalescent home to be opened up to care for soldiers who have been wounded. And so she is there, and she's supposed to be learning how to become a nurse, but she's terrible at that. Um, but the book is just so warm because she is a really principled young woman. And she's mocked for her Americanness, but there are wonderful characteristics like... She's the kind of person who goes out on a limb to champion the rights of others and to ensure that other people are being taken care of, even if it means flouting the rules and putting herself in harm's way. So that's American, right? I thought this was wonderful. It is a romance. So we're reading about a man and a woman falling in love through adversity. But it's just so well written. There are also snippets of Scottish Gaelic, and it was really well incorporated because it didn't take you out of the book, it didn't take you out of the story when you encountered it, but it also made the read that much more authentic. It's a little mm. over 400 pages, but mm. it read so, mm. so easily. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you're looking for. Mm, you finished your fruit, you want more? Okay, let's get you another piece. <sighs> Next book that I finished was Small Island by Andrea Levy. And if you watch my vlog a few days ago, then you'll know that there's a full story around that book. I started reading Small Island last year uh, as a library yeah. copy. And I needed to finish it in January for a book club discussion. So I bought a copy and gave myself time for it to arrive, I think. But it didn't arrive. So I ended up having to get another electronic version and read the parts that I hadn't read before. So it's a big book. It's over 400 pages as well. Small Island is a wonderful story about prejudice and bias and moving away from home, moving away from your comfort zone and things not being as you expect. The story about a young Jamaican woman who marries someone and goes to England to see him and She's been raised in colonial Jamaica and raised with the expectation that British is synonymous with good and synonymous with high class. And so she goes to England expecting that everybody's going to act like the queen. <laughs> she turns up in her pearls and her white gloves and, you know, touching surfaces and her white gloves are getting scuffed. And she's like, how could that be? Because she's been raised with this high ideal. And it's a wonderful mm. and comic look at the failure to meet expectations but it's also a really great book about discrimination because everyone in this book is prejudiced in some way and we see lots of different characters explore the same uh, um we see lots of different characters go through very similar experiences and yeah, see yeah. how they relate to other people but also how they mirror yeah, yeah this prejudice that has first been visited Dad, upon Dad. them. Wonderful read, and I'm going to talk more Dad, about this Dad. book another time Dad, because Dad. Dad. I'm waiting to get my physical copy, and I'm planning to buy a copy for someone because this book, like I was telling my book club members, the beginning of this book reads so much like the life of someone that I know personally. I must get this book for her. And the next book that I read was a poetry collection. Uh middle grade poetry collection called The Surrender Tree. The author or the poet is Margarita Engel and she's Cuban American and she's writing about the struggle for freedom of Cubans and set in Cuba and we're reading about these characters lives. There are four characters that we're reading about and so like I said it's written in verse and it's written for a middle grade audience so the book was really short but also really profound we're reading about a young woman who is a naturalist healer and because she works with the natural environment she's been accused of being a witch and so she's being hunted 
but even though she's being persecuted she is still a really principled person so she doesn't discriminate on who she helps so even the people who are looking to attack her she's still trying to heal them as well so it's a really great book about living to your values and your principles it was profound in its investigation of Cuban history but also like I said on the characterization it was wonderful I'd like to get a copy of that as well and then the last book that I finished was Far Cry from Kensington by Mural Spark and did I mention that I'm reading Mural Spark's books this is my second of her books so far I have a far way to go because she wrote 22 but Far Cry from Kensington was really interesting because we have a main character who is not a likable person, but the book is just so funny and you think you know where the story is going and then you don't. The story here is about a woman who is older and she's looking back at her life and relating this period of her life where she worked in the publishing industry, um, but she... <laughs> she wasn't doing well for herself um, financially so she was living in this rooming house and she had all these other people who lived in the house with her and so she introduces a lot of her what do you call them housemates or roommates and they all have a little story and she's kind of telling it to you in this anecdotal style and not quite following each story to its to its climax because Eventually all the stories come together to make the story that is a far cry from Kensington, but in the beginning you don't know that and So we're reading about This main character's job in publishing and this man who's trying to get published and kind of stalking her and She refuses to get his story published and instead she calls him by an insult and she keeps repeating that insult all through the book It's also about her trying to lose weight because she starts off being a uh, uh, she calls herself a fat person and she focuses on her physical appearance but also the physical appearance of other people and we see her attempting to transform and what that transformation looks like for her what it means for her but also how it's perceived by other people um, one of the people is a seamstress who helps to adjust her clothes and so this woman is marveling at her attempts to lose weight and has this whole story that she's told herself about this woman's weight loss so it's fantastic it's it's comic it's funny um it's hilarious really there are parts in this book which are laugh out loud funny but you also feel a little put off by how this woman talks about her physical appearance and the physical appearance of others even though you understand it's a part of a larger story so i'm a little com I'm a little conflicted about my overall take on the book just because I loved parts of it and then I didn't love parts. So, more on that later. <laughs> Let's make that. Um, I don't know if you do drinking games for videos, but if you needed a drinking game for this video, hey, you're back. If you needed a drinking game for this video, more on that later it would definitely be the tagline. So those are the nine books that I read in January. And like I said, I had a fantastic reading month. I enjoyed a lot of the books that I was reading. I also started reading a couple of other things that I didn't finish. Um, and I have a couple of them here, so why not, why not show them to you? I'm reading Cuba, A New History by Richard Gott. And... I should have been buddy reading this with Heidi and Doris, but they finished um, and I didn't. It's terrible. It's, you sympathize with me. Look at the print in this book. It's such that I can't read this at night. And during the day, I can't because, you know, small child who is sometimes very demanding. And then I started reading this one, but I didn't finish. So I'm going to be talking about this one in February. Ex Libris by Michiko Pakotani and this is about a hundred books that she recommends that you read and reread. So more on that later. <laughs> I will be making another video later today or tomorrow with my TBR for February and my TBR for February is extensive so I hope you will join me for my next videos if you're new here thank you so much for coming thanks for watching this video give me a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more I hope you do and until next time
just chat in the comments about what you read, what you loved in January, and yeah, happy reading! Bye!